Mi-a problema asta, mai ales în radio. Când reglez ceva, vă place să mă uit la un ac, cum să cum crede să deplasează, decât să mă uit la altceva. Good day everybody and welcome back for another video. I promised in the last one about the car with screwdriver set that I'm gonna be back with a kit build. And this is a really nice kit that I received from my friend Andre, Yankee Oscar 6, Tango Juliet Juliet from uh, rowwave.com. And uh, it's a very nice direct conversion receiver for the 80 meters band. Um, I believe the design is based on the Lydia 80 meters band direct conversion receiver. But uh, Andre made a few modifications and uh, designed a very nice and uh, small uh, PCB board, which I really liked. And uh, of course, I was uh, out of patience, so I uh, heated up the soldering iron and uh, started to put it together. And it was ready in no time. Uh, good to be tested. Um, yeah, it's a really, really nice kit. But uh, before I'm going to show you um, couple of other things I wanted to talk about a few modifications that I usually do to the simple uh, kits like this one on the power input usually you have a 100 uh, microfarads capacitor I've seen this in the pixie uh, transceivers in the um, 49er QRP transceiver and uh, many other simple designs uh, I always replace this one with 470 uh, microfarads and sometimes 1000 because it helps me to filter the DC uh, power input, um, especially if I'm using a wall plug, for example, and uh, it helped me get, get rid of a lot of uh, interferences. And also on the output, usually it's a 10 uh, microfarads or 100 microfarads capacitor on the output of the LM386 audio amplifier. I always replace this one with 470 uh, microfarads, sometimes 1000 as well, <laughs> just because I like have, uh, having uh, a little bit uh, more on the lower end, well, the lower frequencies. It, it, makes, uh, it makes it sound better. Also, um, you will see here in the schematic, I have a bunch of X's in here, usually for the audio portion of the circuit. I'm always going to use these kind of capacitors. Um, I forgot how they're called. I think they're, they're Mylar um, capacitors. And uh, I don't like using ceramic capacitors because I noticed that even though they have the same value, the Mylar capacitors, they react differently in, a, in an audio circuit. And it sounds a lot better, especially when it comes to audio filters. So yeah, I've tested this one. It sounds really, really nice. and. Uh, I guess uh, right now I have to show you uh, a few more things that you might need to to build this uh, receiver. Now I'm not sure for how long this will be available on the Rowwave website, but uh, you have the schematic, so in case you decide to build it on your own, besides the parts that <laughs> you have here on the board, you will need um, 10 kilo ohms um, multi-turn potentiometer for tuning. You will need a 10 kilo ohms potentiometer for the RF gain control or RF attenuator, call it as you wish, and a 50 kilo ohms potentiometer for volume control. Unfortunately, I did not have um, 50 kilo ohms, so I replaced it with 100. That will do as well, it works fine. Also, in case you're planning to use an external power supply or external battery, you might need a power plug. You will need a, a BNC connector for the antenna, unless you're planning to use uh, some other styles of, of antennas, but uh, usually I like to use this one. You will need a switch for the AF filter. It's right here. Um, for a, C, a single sideband and CW, so you will switch uh, the filter in and out, I believe, for the CW. And uh, if you want a power switch, power on and off, I do like that, so I'm going to add the second switch for that. And um, an LED indicator, this one is a 5 millimeters LED with a 1 kilo ohms resistor uh, soldered uh, on the positive uh, leg of the LED and I have this 
plastic things that usually uh, helps me to uh, have the, the LED on the front panel. Uh, what else I have? A connector for the output for headphones and also I'm going to use this one for an external speaker um, just in case I don't want to use the internal speaker. I'm still thinking that I'm going to build it with an external speaker or internal one. I prepared this tiny speaker. It doesn't sound so great, but it's small. So I believe I'm going to use this one. Um, I tried others as well, but uh, for some reason, um, the LM386 amplifier at uh, loud volume, it starts squeaking, squeaking. So I don't like that. And of course, most of the time I'm using this uh, speaker that has a, an enclosure and the sound uh, is really good. The speaker has to be 4 ohms. I tried uh, 8 ohms as well. This tiny one, for example, it's 8 ohms and it works fine. But I tried different uh, speakers, uh, a bigger size, and they seem to uh, do the LM386 uh, squeaky sounds uh, for some reason. Um, what else I did here, the C19, it's uh, in the schematic, it says that it's 47 nanofarads. I also replaced this one to 100 nanofarads just because I want to cut a little bit of the uh, high frequencies. And uh, I guess that's it. I haven't done any other modifications. It uh, sounds really nice. And uh, now I guess it's time to uh, adjust the bandpass filter on the input using the nano VNA and uh, set it on the to resonate on the 80 meters band. All right, so I'm 42 years old and I'm not an expert in using the nano VNA because I just uh, got it some while ago and uh, I used it mostly to uh, check my antennas, but it's good that we can use it to uh, adjust bandpass filters. So I connected the antenna input to um, port 2 of the Nano VNA and uh, pin 16 on the IC to port 1. And of course the ground is connected to ground. And uh, right now I'm getting about uh, minus 10 decibels, around uh, 3.5 megahertz. And if I go up to 3.8 I have somewhere around minus 13 decibels and of course it's uh, going down drastically <laughs> on the outside of the 80 meters band now if you don't have a nano VNA you can also um, adjust the filter by ear but you will have to complete the circuit uh, soldering everything else a potentiometer and um, power supply and whatever and uh, actually listen to the signal ideally would be to actually uh, set the receiver between 3.5 and 3.8 megahertz with the help of this variable inductor and the uh, trimmer capacitor and also with these two uh, trimmer uh, resistors so uh, I believe I'm going to use a frequency counter as well for this receiver. I'm going to have to build a separate circuit. We're going to talk about that uh, at, uh, later on. And uh, right now I just set it up using the TrueSDX transceiver to make sure that uh, I am between 3.5 and 3.8 megahertz. And all I did was just to run the, the receiver. After I, I did it with the Nano VNA, I want, also wanted to check the ear method. And of course, you just have to set these two filters until you have the loudest signal on the entire portion of the 80 meters band between 3.5 and 3.8 megahertz. Usually, I like to center the filter around uh, 3.6 megahertz, 3.65. And then I'm just checking to make sure that on the top of the band and lower part of the band, I still have a strong signal. If not, I will just uh, do any adjustments accordingly. And once I'm happy, I'm good to go.
Далеко от города Армавира. Юра, вопрос Problema asta mai ales în radio. Că reglez ceva, vă îmi place să mă uit la un ac, cum, să, cum crede să deplasează, decât să mă uit la altceva. La bare, la cifre digitale și așa mai departe. Uh, cu greu am, am trecut de problema asta. Deci cu, um, cu indicația digitală. Dar m-am obișnuit. Înțeleg că ăsta e viitorul. În loc să rotești, trebuie să apeși sus și în jos, pe diverse taste. Uh, mă rog. Bine, Bogdane, nu mai lungesc, o lungim ca la final, ca știi tu cine când ies și mai stau de vorbă. Y9, UP de Y9, LQ7 și te mai bine o seară plăcută. Alright, so here's the, the finished circuit that I just made. It's quite simple, um, only one transistor and um, an inductor, a couple of capacitors, two resistors and you're done. Um, so what I have, this side it's actually just the, the power. Uh, connection with the switch and I have a diode uh, 1N4007 uh, just like a reverse voltage protection the plus comes here through the diode and then here I have the switch and this is the, um, the plus goes to the LED it goes to this little circuit and then also the plus goes to the frequency counter and the minus it's uh, the same for all the Uh, the little circuit, the frequency counter and also the receiver. I also have 12 volts from here going to the receiver and uh, yeah, it's very, very simple. <laughs> uh, on the screen you can see the schematic for this little circuit and uh, all, uh, all you have to do, uh, I have this, in case you're using the same frequency counter uh, as I do, Uh, in here is noted that it's uh, ground, even though it's the red wire, which usually is the positive. But this is the ground, so I'm soldering it to the to the ground. Uh, the negative, uh, sorry, the the signal. Um, it goes to one side, and then I have the signal coming from the receiver through a wire, and this one uh, gets soldered. See, I have many things here uh, to pin one of the IC, and that's it. It's very, very simple, and uh, I guess it's time to test it and uh, see if it works. This is it. <laughs> it's working. It's uh, it's all good. I just checked it with the True SDX, and it's spot on. So, no need to adjust the the frequency in the the frequency counter. Right now there's a QSO, a Romanian QSO, with my uh, friend, Mr. Imi, <laughs> Yankee Oscar 2, uh, Lima Tango Foxtrot, if I remember. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's working very nice. I didn't have to do any adjustments and uh, I'm really happy. It's very stable, the, the receiver, usually after 5-10 minutes of warm-up, it, it becomes really stable and uh, I have to admit, uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> so yeah, beautiful. I'm gonna come back probably next week um, with, a, um, with a video about building a, an aluminum uh, sheet enclosure because I had uh, quite a few people asking me about the way I'm building enclosures and I promised that I'm gonna come back with a video on that. So I guess you, you'll get to see it uh, finished in, uh, in an enclosure uh, next week probably. Um, what can I say? Thanks Andre for the kit. I had a lot of fun uh, testing it and uh, trying to make it sound uh, the way I like it. And uh, yeah, I guess um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and until then, 73.